Welcome for the very first time to Attack on Cowboys. If you want an explanation as to why the brand and the name of the channel has shifted, it will be towards the end of the video. But the news is why y'all here. So let's get right into it. Big Mike stay late to a party, but I'm sure his ass ain't gonna be late to Thanksgiving dinner because Mike McCarthy has finally had a grand epiphany and he's finally figured out, going into what, week 10, 11, something like that, he's finally figured out who the starting running back and the lead back actually should be on this team when half of all of us figured it out literally after a few weeks we knew who the best back was on this damn team man in addition to that we have a mystery unfolding in front of us because what in the heck is going on with deron bland and more importantly what is going on with our entire training and medical staff for the Dallas Cowboys because I have never seen a team this damn brittle in all of my years of watching sports. Speaking of brittle, Jerry Jones may have a mutiny on his hands. It seems like some of the Cowboys players are starting to openly speak against some of the things that Jerry Jones is championing. Let's go ahead and jump into y'all daily dose of Dallas Cowboys news and be sure to subscribe for more Cowboys content on the regular. Mike McCarthy has finally figured out that you cannot have a running back by committee type of running back room when you don't have a committee of capable running backs to operate said committee, if you get what I'm saying. Rico Dowdle is the new undisputed number one lead running back for the Dallas Cowboys at least for the rest of the 2024 season because let's be real they're likely going to draft a new running back in one of the top two or three rounds in this upcoming nfl draft and that guy is likely going to end up being our running back of the future so rico is probably going to have a short-lived stint as the lead back of the dallas cowboys or i should say the dallas shiny silver pants because y'all we got to be tanking at this point because how does it take over half of the season for you to figure out who the best running back on your team is when you have had these guys in training camp, OTAs, and everything else all offseason, Mike McCarthy. See, this is one of my issues with Mike McCarthy. He is perpetually reactive versus being proactive. This man is never ahead of the curve, and it takes him getting hit in the head with a sink to finally get a point across. Now, I don't know if this was Jerry Jones is doing, and he's finally backing off. I got to be fair. That is a huge possibility because someone made a great point. Jerry Jones has essentially been the shadow head coach for a long time for this team, and it's very clear. We've been running the Jerry Coast offense for the last eight years, bro, because the offense always looks the same in big games, and I have a feeling that's because Jerry Jones wants this team to look a certain way. I I don't know. I don't know. I'm starting to buy into some of the conspiracy theories. I can't believe it. It could possibly be just Jerry Jones finally saying, hey, Mike, do what you want to do. You're probably going at the end of the season anyways. I've sabotaged you enough and made it impossible for you to have a good enough season to actually keep your job. So do what you want to do, Mike. The next guy's going to come in. He's going to have a clean slate and a quarterback that had a whole season to rest, essentially, and see the cluster book that is his Dallas Cowboys team. And you're going to have a receiver that got a brand new contract and a Micah Parsons and all these other tools and 60 to $70 million in cap space and top draft picks and the next head coach regardless of what y'all want to think about the Cowboys and the state that we in y'all heard Ashton Gentry say I want to play for the Cowboys this is still this is still this is still a premier destination in sports unfortunately that's going to work against us as fans because we're going to have to continue to see BS because Jerry's ego is going to continue to get fed but Something has to get fed to these players on this Dallas Cowboys team because what in the hullabaloo is going on with all of these dang on injuries as it pertains to the Cowboys season so far? Mike McCarthy was asked about Deron Bland's injury and why he hasn't returned yet and what's going on because at this point, I think all of us are like, bro, are they just telling him to miss the whole season because I mean, they trying to tank or what's happening with DB, right? Mike McCarthy said, I wouldn't say so. I haven't been part of any conversation that illustrates that as far as people just suggesting that are they sitting them out for the season. Until it's right, we're not going to play him. You've just got to trust the feedback between him and Britt Brown and trust the process. Right now, we just haven't crossed that threshold yet. So Deron Bland's foot injury was way, way more serious than they let on and led us to believe initially. 
And that is frustrating because Jerry Jones' front office and everybody involved kind of had a hunch that this season was going to be more tumultuous <laughs> than what they let on and initially led us to believe because they initially made us feel like we had a light at the end of the tunnel. We had Micah Parsons. We still had D-Law at the time. We had a couple of losses on our backs, right? But we all were like, hey, we're going to get a couple guys back. We're going to get healthy. De'Ron Bland's going to come back and make this defense really stabilize itself a little bit. And then boom, we lose Micah Parsons. And boom, we lose Demarcus Lawrence. And boom, we lose Dak Prescott. And boom, we lose pretty much everybody, right? Tyler Guyton's in and out the lineup now. And Deron Bland has just been kind of hanging back. And they activated his 21-day practice window a while back. And then they finally moved him up to the active 53-man roster. But he still hasn't played any games in two weeks after they've moved him up. So at this point, he's essentially taking up a roster spot for no reason. Is Deron Bland going to play or not? And why is everyone being so cryptic about this? Is this an issue that could be something that's lingering, that could potentially affect the way that Deron Bland plays just in the future? If he never really feels comfortable with that foot again, is this a lot more serious than what we've all been led to believe? Because it's starting to look that way. It's starting to look like some type of deal that could potentially lead to a chronic foot issue remember there's been athletes all throughout time man that have been great athletes had great starts to their career and then they had that one nagging foot injury and granted some guys like a Yao Ming they had other conditions being seven foot 18 foot tall you know what I'm saying uh they, they had other conditions that kind of made that foot injury situation be exacerbated a little bit but Deron Bland is starting to worry me a little bit y'all now I hope they just come out and just say like I, I don't know I don't know it's worrying me because clearly he's not comfortable something's not comfortable and if he has to go back in and get some kind of surgery to clean up something that's not quite right because this type of situation leads to those type of deals y'all usually when you see a guy that, that that is coming back from an injury and he had a long shelf time and when he's coming back, something just still doesn't feel quite right to the point to where you don't trust it. You don't feel comfortable giving it a go. This could definitely lead to something that's a little bit more troublesome. Um, prayers up to Deron Bland. I'm hoping that the man gets 100% recovery. He gets back to being the ball hawk that he absolutely is, the pick six king himself. Um, but this is concerning. Uh, no doubt about it. This is concerning. And what's also concerning is the fact that literally everyone, Everyone has been with the rehab group, like most of the season. It seems like we have a new guy, a new key piece with the rehab group or not practicing or battling some type of injury or I don't know what's going on. We got Tyler Smith, Deron Bland, Eric Kendricks, Hunter Lepke, Dak Prescott, Nick Vigil, Kalen Carson, Zach Martin, Trevon Diggs, Jordan Lewis were all not practicing yesterday, right? All those people were not practiced. And Smith and Bland were doing rehab work at the start of media access, right? So what is going on with our injuries? Do we need a new training crew? Do y'all need to go to UTA or something around the block? Dallas Cowboys and find y'all some new kinesiology majors that can help y'all with this damn athletic training y'all got. What is happening? Why is our entire team so damn brittle? Our entire team is just crumbling, like literally at the foundation, their bones, their actual essence as a human. The boys are just walking into the star and their, their bodies just get drained. What in the Space Jam is going on in Frisco, man? This has just been, this has been one of those seasons. And in addition to all the injuries, and I don't know what's going on with that, that seriously needs to be looked at because this is just this is unacceptable. The Cowboys are battling the most injuries I've seen the team have to deal with in a very, very long time. And on top of injuries, they're battling the sunlight. And they're battling their, their, their owner trying to say that they got to deal with the sunlight because they took it into account what way they built the stadium and they knew it was going to be an advantage and they know about it and they got to take that into account when they're accepting what side of the field they want to kick on and Jerry, Jalen Tolbert and C.D. Lamb have now come out and said, yeah, the sunlight is distracting, bro. It gets in the way. Sometimes you lose the ball. Sometimes you can't see nothing but the sunlight. And they not making up excuses. They not being soft. They not being pudding. They being for real. I don't care how many weights you lift. I don't care how fast your 40 time is, bro. You go outside and look directly at the sun. You do it. You going to come out that mug having a worse lazy eye than Bernie Mac if you do that. God rest his soul. But for real, 
You gonna do that, man. The sun is an enemy you cannot defeat. <laughs> and through the history of time, ain't nobody about to beat the sun, son. So, Jerry, what is going on, man? What's up with you not raising the curtains or something? What's, why'd you get the stadium built with windows going directly east and west instead of north and south so that wouldn't be an issue seeing the sun glare directly into the damn stadium? You could have still gave it an outside feel without making it feel like outside in the Sahara Desert with a sun beaming in your face. It's hard, y'all. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. I'm telling y'all, this is not an easy task to come up here and still be consistent with y'all every day, provide content for y'all, provide these shows for y'all in such a season that really makes you and gives you every reason to not want to be a fan of this organization. I'm definitely not a fan of, of anybody in that front office or anything, but it, and then the players aren't making it any better, but I, I've gone in on that too much. I'm going to leave that alone until something else happens, and then I'm going to give my opinion that some of y'all don't want, some of y'all appreciate, and then we're going to do it all over again because we got guys that, that this, this don't learn. They like doing it all over again, all the time, including the owner. So I guess it, it starts from the top down. The, the team itself does exactly what Jerry Jones does. So I can't even get mad at Mike or them, bro, because Jerry Jones sees stuff that's obvious. The answer's right in your face, bro, and you keep doing the opposite. Michael does stuff. The answer's right in his face, and he keeps doing the opposite. So I can't even get mad. <sighs> what I can say is this. I need to have the ability to speak freely on this team. I need to have the ability to criticize and critique and, and be honest, you know what I'm saying, without having to worry about anybody being offended, especially with my as my influence continues to grow and I continue to put myself out in the world more and I, as I type, try to build this business up, you know what I'm saying, this business that I'm building here, I need to be able to do what I do without having to worry about any assumed attachments that may be there. So it's not to say I'm not gonna support Dak Prescott. It's not to say that I'm still not going to be a huge fan. He's not my favorite player. And he's still my favorite player. I'm still gonna defend him. We still gonna fight the good fight. When there's a good fight to fight, because if he's messing up, I'm gonna say he's messing up. There's nothing that's gonna be actually different about the platform itself. I just want to kinda gain my independence in a sense and separate the content and the topics and the things that I may speak on and the opinions that I may have about some of his teammates. I need to separate my voice from his brand essentially or his name being attached to it or anywhere near it. We are going to be initiating our rebrand a little soon. Initially, I was going to change the name of everything when Dak Prescott retired or when he stopped playing for the Dallas Cowboys for obvious reasons. But I'm going to go ahead and go to my actual name. The actual name of the show is being rebranded as of this video. We will no longer be known as The Dak Attack. The show is now called Attack on Cowboys, presented by your boy The Attack, right? But... Exciting stuff there. Exciting stuff because it really makes me feel a lot more free and not concerned about, you know, anybody seeing my content or a player seeing my content on social media and his name being attached to it. And I just don't want to be the root of any negativity or any ill will or anybody looking sideways at him because they feel like I'm saying stuff on his behalf or something. That is not what I'm saying stuff on my behalf because I just want the attack on sports in general to stop. The attack on sports in general just has to stop with the narratives and how things are perceived and how things are kind of cooked and baked and presented to audiences and, and just, just how sports are talked about and, and how sports are consumed. It's just an entire attack on sports and, and we're just going to start with the attack on the Dallas Cowboys, right? So that is the name of the show moving forward again. Nothing's going to change as far as how we support or what we're doing or anything like that. It has nothing to do with anything else outside of the fact that I just want to kind of free myself a little bit to just be more free with you guys and be able to be more genuine and authentic and not have to worry about how my show could possibly be perceived by anybody that's in any of those camps, right? And, and that's just, I think that's just me being very aware uh, being very socially aware, being a good businessman, because at the end of the day, the DAC attack is not going to be on any of my official documents. It's not on any of my official documentation. So I might as well just kind of make everything a little bit more consistent. And that's just what it is. All right. So attack on cowboys and we speak the same old cow.
Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still them boys. Hey! Woo! Hey! I'm still them boys.